I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick. Today we're going to talk about the American College of Cardiology consensus pathway on non-statin therapy for LDL cholesterol lowering. This is really important guidance because we now have two new FDA-approved medications over the last two years that are being advertised on TV that our patients are seeing. And until now, we haven't had much clear consensus or guidance on how they should be used. First, we'll talk about the new medications. Then we'll talk about the recommendations. Bempidoic acid is an oral medic medicine and glycerin is a sub-Q injection. Bempidoic acid works upstream from HMG-CoA reductase in order to reduce LDL cholesterol. Importantly, in distinction from statins, it doesn't cause myalgias. When it's used alone, it decreases LDL cholesterol by about 25%. When it's used with a statin, it gives us about an additional 15% LDL reduction on top of what we get with statins alone. It's also available combined with the Zetamide, 10 milligrams, and then when it's added to a statin, we get about an additional 38% reduction in LDL cholesterol. I think this, this part of it is potentially very exciting because a lot of people on statin monotherapy don't get to their LDL goal, and the combination of bempidoic acid with the Zetamide is an attractive non-injectable option for many of those patients. Side effects. Side effects of bempidoic acid include a slight increase in tendon rupture, gout, BPH, and AFib. It's important to note that the randomized trial of bempidoic acid or in cardiovascular endpoints isn't out until the end of this year. The other new medication, glycerin is a sub-Q injection given just twice a year in the office it, after initially being given at baseline and then at three months. And glycerin inhibits production of PCSK9. It does it as an intracellular level, not an extracellular uh, site of action as with the PCSK9 MABs, but because they both work through similar pathways, it's important to recognize that they can't be used together. And glycerin decreases LDL cholesterol by about 50%, just a hair less than the PCSK9s. Its randomized control trial won't be out until about 2024. So where do these fit in? Primarily two places. The first is for individuals who are not meeting their LDL goal on maximally tolerated statin therapy after the use of medicines that have shown an effect on endpoints in randomized controlled trials, azetamibe and PCSK9 MABs. The second place is for individuals who can't tolerate a statin primarily because of myalgias. Let me go over the specific recommendations for the groups for whom LDL lowering is recommended. First, individuals with established ASCVD. A high-intensity statin is recommended. Then if the LDL has not decreased 50% or the LDL is not less than 55 milligrams per deciliter, note the new recommendation on goal. It used to be 70. Then consider the addition of a non-statin therapy, initially azetamide or a PCSK9 MAB. If after their use further lowering is needed, then bempidoic acid. And glycerin can be used instead of a PCSK9 MAB if there's issues with adherence or being able to take an injectable at home on one's own. The second and third categories have similar recommendations, and those categories are individuals with an LDL cholesterol above 190 and individuals with diabetes between the ages of 45 and 70. Here, start with a statin, either a medium intensity or a high intensity statin. If you don't get to goal on the statin, then consider either azetamibe or PCSK9. Then, if still not at goal, consider bempidoic acid or glycerin. The largest category for many of us is primary prevention in individuals with an LDL cholesterol between 70 and 189 and a calculated 10-year cardiac risk of 7.5% to 20%. 
Here, start with a moderate intensity statin. LDL goal is 30 to 49% reduction in LDL or an LDL less than 100. And then titrate to a high intensity statin if needed. Now, this next piece is interesting. The guidelines don't recommend non-statin therapy for further LDL reduction in this group, even if the LDL goal is not achieved, unless the person has a greater than 20% 10-year risk. Then, after high-intensity statins, if still not a goal, consider azetamide. The use of the newer agents for additional LDL Lowering isn't recommended for primary prevention at this point unless statins are not tolerated, which brings us to our next category. If someone can't tolerate a statin, make sure that's in fact true. Try a few different statins. If they really cannot tolerate a statin, then the guidelines recommend that bempedoic acid is an option. I actually think that in this group of patients, the combination of bempedoic acid and azetamide uh, can be very useful. The takeaway points here are that since the new medications don't yet have randomized controlled trial data on clinical efficacy, they ought to be reserved for use after the use of medicines where randomized controlled trial data exists, statins, azetamide, and PCSK9 maps. This is incredibly important guidance in an area where we take care of patients with high cholesterol every day. I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.